Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Colbath. My name is Julie Colbath. I am the coordinator of civic engagement here in the Office of Student Life um, at UM Dearborn. Today we're doing a cool crossover with one of our other programs, Real Talk Friday. If you don't know about Real Talk Friday, um, we have different topics. And so it's a cool place put on by students for students um, where you can hang out and, you know, learn some different things, talk to some different people. Um, but this past semester, we've been trying to have our uh, pro staff in the office on every other, um, every other time. So we can kind of share some of our skills, some of our passions, some of our interests. So today, thought that since we already have a cooking show, and I really enjoy cooking, um, we could do a crossover event. So today, we're going to be making hummus, which I'm really excited about. I've never made before. Um, I chose this recipe because it didn't have tahini in it. Tahini is not something that I normally have in my house. And so I wanted to choose something that had more common um, ingredients that you might find in your pantry. So it calls for a clove of garlic. Um, like I've mentioned on other episodes, and if this is your first time joining, feel free on our YouTube page. There are all of the past episodes that you can watch at your own leisure. Um, a lot of the times I just have minced garlic and I went crazy at Sam's Clothing <laughs> the other day and bought this huge one, which I probably will never actually get through before it goes bad. Um, but it's nice because then I can just add some right in the pan. So we'll be using this already minced garlic. Um, we're going to be using a lemon. If you don't have a lemon, but you have like this lemon juice, sorry, the clear a little bit, um, feel free to use that instead. Um, then we're gonna be using right hummus. The base of hummus is garbanzo beans, also called chickpeas. You wanna make sure that you drain and rinse them. Like we talked about before, rinsing beans helps get off some of the extra sodium that they normally have when they get canned. Um, then we're going to use a half of a cup of warm water. I didn't heat this up, I just turned on my tap and let it run um, until it got warm. So no big deal, right? You don't have to try to like heat up water. You could nuke it in the microwave if you wanted. Um, we're going to use two tablespoons of plain yogurt. Um, yogurt is one of those sneaky places where they add a lot of sugar. So if you're trying to watch your sugar content, Yogurt can seem healthy, and it is healthy, right? It's got a lot of probiotics, um, but I often buy plain yogurt, and then I'll add it in like honey and fruit. Um, and so just take a look at the sugar content if you're concerned um, about your sugar intake. Uh, but plain yogurt is also nice because you can kind of use it in substitution for like sour cream, um, other dairy products. Um, then we're also gonna use you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Um, two tablespoons of canola oil. If you have vegetable oil or olive oil, feel free to use that. Um, and then I'd mix this already together, salt and pepper. Um, the recipe that I'll post, it also has a few recommendations if you wanted to make a few different flavors. The nice thing about this is it seems like it's a base recipe. Again, haven't tried it yet. Um, so you could, I'm probably gonna add more garlic than they say. Um, you can make it like a garlic hummus. You could roast red peppers or buy the jars of roasted red peppers and add that into your hummus. Um, I'm trying to think of other flavors that they normally have at their store, right? Like pine nuts, a flavor. Um, you could chop up some pine nuts and throw them in there. So you can kind of adapt this to be what you want. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to juice our lemon since we've already rinsed our beans. So one of the ways, and this is a little bit of an old lemon, um, one of the ways that they suggest that you juice is to roll the lemon on the counter or the table just to kind of loosen, loosen it up and get the juices flowing. Um, I've seen a, a, a hack where you could just like poke a hole and then juice it that way. I've never tried it. If you've tried it, let me know. Um, so we're just going to cut the lemon in half. It still looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to squeeze it right into this bowl. Um, 
And thankfully, this lemon doesn't seem to have really any seeds, which is sort of odd. Um, but if it did, then you could easily, oh, see, there's one. If they're large, I don't know if you can even see that, like this, you can just pull the seed out. Um, if you have a juicer, you could also use that, right? Either like handheld juicers or the ones that you press down and twist the lemon around. Um, but sometimes it can be, they can be like smaller seeds, right? And so you can get those out by either like straining it through a fine mesh uh, strainer or just using a fork or a spoon to get it out. Um, so I'm trying to get out as much juice as I can, right? It's very subjective. What's one large lemon? That's up to you. And then all lemons sort of juice differently. So not exactly sure how much we'll get, but at least we have some extra if we need. All right, I'm gonna toss that. So that was our main prep. Um, this seems really easy. I wanted to do something that was simple, especially something that I didn't have to turn on my oven because it's getting hot again and I'm not a fan. Um, cool. So now what we're going to do is just throw all of it in a blender. This is going to be real quick. So I'm going to bring the blender over to you. And if you have a food processor, that'll work too. Um, even if you have one of those like smaller blenders, it would probably be fine um, capacity-wise. Because this this blender also has the like individual where you can make like smoothies, so it might fit in something like that. So we're just going to add in our garbanzo beans. I'm just gonna put all my um, we're going to add in our salt and pepper, add in our oil, add in our yogurt. And if you're, um, if you're dairy free, there are lots of other recipes that don't call for dairy. I was sort of surprised that this was in there, but it seemed like a more simple recipe. So you could try a, a non-dairy alternative that might work, or you can find a different recipe. Our lemon juice, our water. Hopefully it turns into something delicious um and then normally as my own probably made up rule of thumb i do one teaspoon per clove um i am going to add a tablespoon because i like garlic hummus um if i want to add more i can um but i think a tablespoon will be a good amount. Um, a lot of the times you see roasted garlic hummus. So to roast garlic, you can just take like a whole bowl. I don't know what exactly you like, what exact temp you roast it on in, in the oven, but you would just like throw it in the oven and then it roasts. Um, and then you're able to throw those cloves into the blender. Okay. So Super easy. And now we are going to blend until it is smooth and well mixed. So sorry for the sound. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to turn it on puree so that it will hopefully get creamy. <laughs>
whether it was with Aaron or in the comment section afterwards. Oh, it's actually pretty smooth. Um, genuinely surprised because you never know. Grab a spoon. Hummus. Um, this does seem a bit thinner um, than some of the traditional hummuses that you might buy at the store. Um, so I think I would recommend you could add some of the water and then if it's still too thick, you could add more of the water. Um, it has a nice flavor. It's still, there is like a little bit of a grittiness. So I'm gonna try to turn the blender back on just to see if we can puree a little bit more to get that uh, grittiness to go away. at different capacities, different speeds, different blades. Um, so we'll see. Should not have put that back in the yogurt. Um, we'll see if doing it a little bit longer helps. Oh. Yeah, it seemed to help. I think with um, a tablespoon of minced garlic. I could have added more if I wanted a stronger garlic flavor, but it is like at a good level. Um, so let me try to pour it into a bowl so you can see. Right, so this says that it makes 10 quarter cup servings. I don't know if that's a lot or a little hummus. Um, so, right, you can see it is a little bit more liquidy than you would get at the store. So again, if you want it, this would be good for like drizzling, right? I feel like, I don't know if they're as popular now, but they were popular like Buddha bowls where it's a bunch of like veggies and some sort of grain and then you drizzle. So this would be good for drizzling. Um, but if you wanted it to be thicker, I think you could easily add less water. Um, you can serve hummus with so many things, right? You could, I likely will be eating it with tortilla chips because I don't have much fresh produce in my house at the moment. Um, so it's a great dip with just tortilla chips. It's also good with produce, right? Carrots, cucumbers, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, tomatoes. Um, you can make, you can eat with pita chips, that's also good. You can make your own pita chips pretty easily. Um, I can't remember if we've made tortilla chips on here before. I feel like maybe with the tortilla soup we might have made it. Um, so they're not super hard to make. You can either fry them or bake them for pita chips or tortilla chips. Um, yeah, but it's a great snack to have, right? It's pretty easy. 
you might already have a can of garbanzo beans at home. It's um, nice to utilize beans in different ways, right? Sometimes you can get ruts using the same products in the same ways. Um, so hopefully this will be an opportunity for you to switch it up. It's a good snack to bring, especially for like different potlucks or any sort of holiday things, um, gatherings outdoors. Um, yeah, I hope you try it. If you do, let me know if you have your own um, own recipe that you normally use and it's sort of tried and true, please feel free to drop it in the chat um, or in the comments if you're watching this afterwards. Um, as always, if you have any suggestions on things that we should be making, I love ideas. Um, so, right, I remember feels like months ago now, and it was, um, when there was a suggestion of doing the chicken tortilla soup from Picasso. That was great. Found the recipe. So if there are things that you want to see, even if it's like, or you want to know how to utilize an ingredient, right, you don't necessarily know what to make with it, please reach out. Um, just as a small update, the pantry has changed its hours. Um, so now we're open on Tuesdays from 11 to 3 and Thursdays from 2 to 6. It's still by appointment only. We are utilizing a new appointment sign up system. Um, it's still that same tiny URL. So instead of bringing you to a Google Calendar, it will bring you to LibCal, which if you've reserved like study spaces or anything on campus lately, it's the same system. Um, one note about that is that appointments do need to be made 24 hours in advance because that's how the system works. Um, so a little bit of a different timeline than it used to be. And another small change is that instead of having one of the pro staff members meet you downstairs, you'll be screened and you'll come upstairs still to grab your prepack bags. Um, so you'll still fill out an order form. So a lot of the things are the same, but there are some small changes. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, recipe ideas, please feel free to email us at umdearbornpantry at umich.edu and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for joining. Again, if you have suggestions, let me know and I hope you have a great weekend.